so this past Friday, the CW released the first official look at Jordan Fisher's in costume impulse. It was a promo poster that perfectly pays homage to the character's comic return in 2018 Flash issue number 50. This character is set to make its debut on the series on its upcoming 150th episode. Now, first impressions are everything, especially with us blurds. And we wasn't feeling this first look. I mean, it was just like, uh, it was the face. It was a bad Photoshop. We just weren't feeling it. And I mean, Fisher himself took to his IG and <clears throat> posted a better look at it. But I mean, dude, this first impression was kind of ruined. It's not his fault. I mean, the CW, ever since the end of season three, Flash has just been kind of trash, which is pretty much a CW curse when it comes to their shows. But anyways, I really hope that this character develops in a great way and he doesn't turn out to be fire and they take him away like they did Jesse Quick and Kid Flash and Excess and Firestorm. Jesus Christ, Flash show. You guys do this a lot. Anyway, Jordan Fisher, good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks, this is Do You Speak Geek, episode 78. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. This is Do You Speak Geek. I am your host, Nix. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, man, it's been a heck of a ride this week, man. We have had some amazing, amazing content, most notably our interview with your favorite senpai. If you guys have not seen that on the IG, please, please go check that out. It was a great time. She's an amazing person. Please go check that video out. If you join us for the first time, welcome, people. Welcome to Do You Speak Geek again. I am Nix. Thanks for all the avid listeners. And if it's your first time, welcome to the ride. For all the new subscribers and new followers, thank you guys for subscribing and following the podcast. If you're listening, you're probably listening on Spreaker. Spreaker is the home team. Shout out to Spreaker. And if not Spreaker, you're probably listening on some other app like Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Audible, Pandora, iHeartRadio, you know, we're, we're kind of everywhere. So wherever you're listening, thank you for listening. Shout out to DoYouSpeakGeek.com. It's the central hub for everything DYSG. Please be sure to hit that website. You can get your merch. You can check out our blogs. Vlogs are even coming soon. Photos, exclusive videos that are going to be there soon. So please, please, please be sure to bookmark on your browser, Do you speak Geek. Dot com. Follow us on social media. It's Facebook at DYSGFB. Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets. Instagram at Do You Speak Geek. And please be sure to hit that YouTube channel up. We are well over 100 subscribers and we're going to keep pushing till we hit 200. It's the only place where you can see the Donald and Daddy show and also other content coming soon as well. Please be sure to subscribe. Hit that like button. Hulk, smash that bell for all notifications and leave your comments. We want to know what you guys think. Nothing extremely huge this week, so we're going to jump into my favorite portion of the show. Y'all know the vibes. Source Wall. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Behold the Source Wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. There is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. Let's hop right into it. The pull list this week. Oh, boy. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The last Ronin number three. This series has been nothing less than stellar. Unexpected allies from the past reveal a possible path to salvation. 
as the Foot Clan sweeps New York City for the rogue Ronin, a final desperate plan in the name of vengeance is made. Spanning decades, this issue's action and intrigue will set up the astounding final issues. Y'all, I swear this is my favorite series of 2021. Please, please check this out. I'm telling you, this is that book. Black Panther 25 is the end of an era for the Black Panther as renowned writer Ta-Nehisi Coates concludes his Wakandan epic. Over five years, Coates has taken the Black Panther to hell and back and expanded Wakanda into the distant stars. Now in his final issue, he brings T'Challa full circle back to the home he left behind and the crown he never fully accepted. This is the story of a king who sought to be a hero. A hero who reduced to a slave, a slave who advanced into a legend, and the man who has struggled to hold up an empire in his bare hands. The journey will conclude, but the legend remains. Yo, shout out Ta-Nehisi Coates, man. His Black Panther run has been incredible. If you say other than that, I can't trust you as a comic fan. I'm sorry. It's going to be sad to see him go, but yeah, check this issue out if you haven't been following along check this issue out please get that spawn 318 this is where you want any new spawn readers to jump on as 2021 will be beginning a new and giant chapter in the expansion of the spawn verse no other details except that please people like i said all the time if you ain't reading spawn you are losing right now milestone infinite edition number zero it is finally in print now people at last it's the return of the legendary milestone comics this one shot feature y'all already know we, we, we've gone on this before it's the same one with the n- number issue with number zero where it's a really big explosion bringing milestone back but now it's in print please please go check that out the other history of the dc universe issue number four words can be tricky Renee Montoya has known for this most of her life. Words taught her to feel ashamed of her gender, her sexuality, and her ethnicity. The people of Gotham City taught her to hide who she was inside, to love, to fit in, and doing so, she taught to hate herself. But from that despair came something unexpected and powerful. Renee's path from a closeted officer in the 1990s to her time as a faceless vigilante as the question one is that inextricably linked to her queerness. It is one that is defined in binaries, outmoded, and hateful stereotypes, and the words that propagate them. At the question, Renee stood in contrast to society's rigid expectations of her, held up a mirror to the world's face, and asked, Who are you? Yo, dope book, man. Definitely is something that you definitely want to get your hands on. Dope book. And finally, we have an indie pick this week. We have Cherry Blackbird number one. Rock star Cherry Blackbird sold her soul for fame. Now at the age of 26, time is running short. The day she turns 27, she'll be dragged to hell. That's, that, that's, that's not cool. Anyway, but Cherry is not one to go quietly. The devil tasked her with collecting seven demonic souls that have escaped the abyss. If she can do this before her next birthday, she'll be released from her eternal pact and spared eternal damnation. Heaven help anyone who gets in her way. Yeah, man, that sounds wild. That's a good book. I am definitely looking forward to reading that next week. Again, people, these are all books coming out this week. Please be sure to hit up your local comic book store to get those issues. All right, people, let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. 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 Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. All right, people. Attack the Block number two announced with John Boyega returning. Awesome news, right? 
John Boyega and director Joe Cornish are set to reunite for Attack the Block 2, a sequel to the British sci-fi action film which premiered in 2011. This news was reported from Deadline and was also confirmed by John Boyega himself. Ah, man. Attack the Block was dope. And the fact that we're getting it again with the, the cast and the director coming back, hey, man, let's get it. John Boyega is the man anyway. Let's do this. New Superman and Batman animated series announced. So Warner Brothers has given a straight-to-series order for the animated series Batman Kick Crusader, a new animated series that is set to debut on both HBO Max and Cartoon Network. Kid Crusader is expected to bring an all-new reimagining of the Batman mythos with the help of three powerhouse executive producers. Listen to this, people. Bruce Timm, J.J. Abrams, and Matt Reeves. I ain't gotta tell you nothing else. This series is going to be insane. Unless you're sick of Batman. Also, Warner Bros. has given a two-season series order for My Adventures with Superman, an all-new kids and family animated series set to debut on also HBO Max and Cartoon Network. The series will follow the action-packed comedic and romantic adventures of Superman and Lois Lane, and will follow Clark Kent and Lois Lane as 20-somethings along with their best friend Jimmy Olsen as they begin to discover who they are as well as what they can accomplish working together as an investigative reporting team at Daily Planet. Seems interesting. I think I can dig it. It'll be a pretty good series. It's going to be family friendly, and so that's always a good thing. Something that me, Donna, and my wife and everyone can enjoy together. So, yeah, that'll be cool. Okay, people. Injustice. The animated movie has been announced. Let me go ahead and just say this now. I am completely standing this movie. I don't even know who's voicing. I don't even know what the animation style is looking like. And I'm already claiming this is going to be the best DC animated movie ever. That's Nix's opinion. It's a bold one, but I'm making it. Warner Brothers Home Entertainment confirmed that an Injustice movie is coming and will be the next title in the studio's slate of animated films. The sneak peek of the film will be available as part of the upcoming home release for Batman Long Halloween Part 2. No other details surrounding the project at this time, not including a voice cast or release date. If all you guys know about Injustice, this is based on the popular comic book series written by the homie Tom Taylor that was also made into a video game by NetherRealm Studios. I hope it focuses more on the comic instead of the video game aspect of it, but either way, it's going to be fire. I can't wait. Hocus Pocus 2 arrives on Disney Plus in 2022 with the original cast. Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy Naney will reprise their original roles for Hocus Pocus 2, which will come to Disney Plus in 2022. In a new press release, Disney confirmed that the original trio will once again play the spooky Sanderson sisters. In a brief plot synopsis, Hocus Pocus 2 will bring about three young women who accidentally revive the Sanderson sisters to modern-day Salem, where the original witch trials took place. The sisters are still hungry for children and must be stopped before they wreak havoc to Salem. Yo, this is going to be great. I can't wait, man. Henry Cavill to star in the Highlander remake. Highlander remake is in a work with Lion Gates and starring Henry Cavill and John Wick director Chad Stahovsky to direct the film. This news comes by way of Cavill himself, who confirmed the news today on his Instagram with a photo and a deadline story about the news. According to Deadline Report, the film will be a reboot of the popular 80s fantasy fiction franchise movie of the same name. Yo, I can't wait, man. Henry Cavill as the high, as the Highlander? I mean, if you can't be Superman, why not be Duncan McCloud? You know what I mean? I feel it. I am ready for it. And finally, we have Teen Titans 3 with a release date. Kinda. Teen Titans, not Teen Titans, sorry, Titans will debut season three on the streaming service HBO Max 
And now we know when, as the cast took to some filming during a little fun with a video teasing of what they have in store next season. HBO Max Titans 3 will be revealed in August. Not a specific date as of yet, but I'm sure we will get one pretty soon. Yo, Titans 3 is going to be dope. I don't know about anyone else who... There are people who I know, shout out to Hey Archer, who didn't enjoy season 2. But, I mean... I'm looking forward to it, you know, with additions of, you know, Blackfire and Red Hood and even Barbara Gordon. This is really shaping up to be an amazing season, so I can't wait to see what happens, people. Let's go ahead and hop into some life. Peace, love, and video games! That's all like Donkey Kong! Yes! That man is playing Galaga. All right, you gamers. Only one piece of news I have for Thumb Life News today. Actually, a couple, really. First, Grand Theft Auto V for PS5, Xbox Series X and S have a release date revealed. Rockstar Games announced on Tuesday the release date for the PS5 and Xbox Series XS version of Grand Theft Auto V. The enhanced version of the game has been in the works for a while now, while launch of the new platform started back in November 11th. Rockstar also confirmed that we'll have bonuses for players as we get closer to the launch of the next-gen version, similar to how the game's been giving PS4 owners free money each month. GTA 5 will be getting upgrades, which means GTA Online will of course get its own upgrades too. That mode being the more popular online environment that players return to each week for new incentives, activities, and more. The release is going to be October, and I'm upset. And I'll tell you why. And this is nothing, this is no secret. I mean, everyone feels the same way. It's just like, this game has reached across its third console. If you're a Sony guy like me, you got this on PS3 back in 2012, I think. Yeah, 2012. And here we are approaching 2022, and this game is coming to another console. Rockstar, what is you doing, baby? Give us the six. I don't want to be buying a PS6 and still playing Grand Theft Auto V. Get it together. And finally, we have Netflix reportedly hiring for a gaming expansion. Netflix appears to be ramping up its hiring efforts for some sort of expansion into gaming, according to a new report. Streaming giant is reportedly looking to hire an executive to oversee this game initiative, with multiple executives from the industry already approached to see if they'd be interested in the position. Netflix has dabbled in gaming areas in the past, so this sort of transition won't be a particularly surprising one if it plays out like Netflix is apparently hoping it will. Now, this is an exclusive uh, quote here. I won't let you know who said this, but. Our members value the variety and quality of our content. It's why we've continually expanded our offering from series to documentaries, film, local language originals, and reality TV. Members also engage more directly with stories they love through interactive shows like Bandersnatch and You vs. Wild or games based on Stranger Things, La Casa de Papel, and To All the Boys. So we're excited to do more with interactive entertainment. Netflix once again to gaming. Okay. I can see a lot of their shows that they have and their movies being based on games. Yeah. I think it'll be a good look. Hopefully it's done right. And that no one uh, flubs up there. Okay, folks. Let's speak technical for a moment. Technically speaking... Your technological advancements. 1.21 gigawatts. Have you tried turning it off and on again? 
All right, you techies. Everything announced at Google I.O. 2021. Let's go ahead and run down this list real quick. Android 12. It is shaking up to be the biggest UI redesign in years called Material U. The new design adds color to buttons, elements, and even your home screen background. Android 12 essentially sets a custom palette of one dominant color and multiple complementary ones based on your wallpaper, changing the overall mood of your entire smartphone. Meanwhile, buttons and other elements on your screen will be larger and rounded than previous. The quick pull-down settings, for example, is displayed as two columns of large buttons for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, flashlight, and other settings that were previously just a little icon. Aside from the new UI, Android 12 brings plenty of new features, including a privacy dashboard, a new way to trigger Google Assistant, and more. Yeah, uh, it's looking pretty decent. I'll just say it's looking pretty decent. Let's just say that. I'll just say that. It's looking decent. Wear OS and Tizen, those smart watches that aren't Apple watches, come running either wearing OS or Tizen, and now Google is combining the two. Essentially, this merger allows Galaxy Watches to load Google Maps, Google Play, and all the apps from the Google Play Store. Supposedly, wearing Wear OS mingling with Tizen will also improve battery life as well. It should be interesting to see the next Samsung Galaxy Watch running the new Tizen Wear OS hybrid. Additionally, Google plans on introducing Fitbit exercise tracking into Wear OS. Google also announced its plans to design Wear OS based devices this fall. I'm definitely going to get my hands on those watches. Absolutely. That, way, that I am excited about. Android Auto Remote. Google is adding digital car key support for Android. While the search company didn't say exactly what companies it's working with, it showed a splash page during the conference of a Dodge, BMW, Chevrolet, Honda, Buick, Ford, Audi, Jeep, Chrysler, Cadillac, Volkswagen, and Renault. Android Car Key is designed to work with NFC and ultra wideband, and you'll even be able to share it with a friend. Launches on Google Pixel and Samsung Galaxy devices later this fall. Project Starlight, Starline, sorry. Google's latest crack at video calling after Hangouts, Meets, and Duo. Project Starline is at least introducing something innovative by essentially creating holograms using high resolution cameras and cutting edge comparisons to, 3D, to create 3D models. Meanwhile, users sit and talk to each other person to person through a half window that displays the other person which should fideli fidelity with such fidelity that they'll look like they're actually there. It's all very impressive. And finally, private Google Photos folders. Ooh, naughty. <laughs> Google Photos is getting a new feature called Locked Folder that lets you hide pictures on your general camera roll and stops apps from seeing them. I mean, we already kind of hide this. We already had this anyway with Android. I mean, there's several apps that you hide your photos. If you want to hide them, that new puppy from your kids, or stop your date from seeing any revealing photos, you can throw them into a password protected locked folder to stop them from showing up on your main photo feed. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of always been around anyway, but now I guess Google has something official for it, so I guess that's cool. So, fellas, if you want to, you know, hide the good old, you know, library, you know what I mean? Dump in that photo. Ladies, if you want to hide your library too, you know? Alright, I'm going to move on here. Alright, nerds, let's mark out. So what you going to do? Goodbye and good night. Bang! All right, you nerds, you wrestling nerds. AEW Dynamite moving to TBS next year. New Friday night show coming in August. 
All Elite Wrestling is moving to TBS in January of 2022. It is also announced that the weekly Friday night show, AEW Rampage, will be premiering on TNT on August 13th at 9 Central Time. TNT will also debut four new annual AEW specials. Man, AEW has already got a second show. It's uh, not even through their year two yet. Hmm. Interesting. I guess they're really keeping the, that foot on the neck of AEW. <laughs> not AEW, sorry, WWE. Speaking of WWE, they have released more people. A month from the second 415 Future Endeavor Day, WWE has released more superstars from the company, this time in NXT. Alexandra Wolfe, Ezra Judge, Skylar Story, Vanessa Bourne, Jessamyn Duke, Kavadi Devi, and referees Drake Wurritz and Jake Clemens were all cut by the company. The biggest name of all is that of the Velveteen Dream. Many accusations surrounded the superstar, which is rumored to have led to his release. I know a lot of people are extremely happy that he has been cut. Um, me, I'm kind of like, eh, it sucks. I mean, the dream was amazing in the ring. But, you know, if the things that came out about him were true, and if he's as big as an asshole as some people is say that he is, I mean, good riddance. I hope AEW doesn't pick him up. But it just sucks because he was amazing at what he did in the ring. And hopefully all the other people who were cut find their way as well, too. And finally, people, Will Ospreay vacates the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> oh, man, this sucked. Shocked the wrestling world. He dethroned Kota Ibushi this past April for the title. Unfortunately, Osprey's run with that title did not last long as New Japan Pro Wrestling confirmed on this past Thursday that British star Will Osprey suffered a neck injury while defending the title against Sinja Taka at Wrestling Dantaku this past May 4th. And on that day, the title had to be vacated while he recovered. Man, that sucks. I was really looking forward to this whole, for nothing else, the collector story thing to continue on with Kenny and him eventually go after Will Ospreay for the IW title. That would have been insane, right? Oh my god, that would have been dope. Anyway, a guy can dream, right? You know what? I think I will go dream that. So, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you all for listening. Please, please be sure to listen to the content, watch the content, react to the content, like the content, follow the content. Let your boy know what you think about that content. Visit the website, doyouspeakgeek.com. Follow us on our social medias, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Check out the YouTube channel. Subscribe and like the videos there. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek? <laughs>